Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliet Clark. Before we get started with today's guest, I want to remind you to go over to YouTube and follow us over, get, get yourself subscribed over on YouTube, uh, Super Brand Publishing. All the recordings, if you're listening over on a podcast, you can see all the videos over there. I promise they're real people, not blow up dolls, not not stick cardboard people. They're real live people. So if you're a visual person, that's the place to go. And then don't forget to take our Promote Profit Publish quiz and find out where your skill set lies and are you really ready to publish. You can find that at www.promoteprofitpublishquiz.com. I saw the look on your face, Tyson, when I said that blow up doll. So <laughs> today's guest is Tyson Gaylord. And um, Tyson's mission is to help you learn, grow, and transform your life. He has spent the last 20 years falling on his face, dusting himself off, and trying again. So you guys, that is the, that is the measure of a true entrepreneur, because we all get really frustrated and we go, I'm never doing this again. I'm getting a job tomorrow. We go and drink or sleep or whatever it is we do when we're upset, and then we start all over the next day. So over the years, he has learned to read, take, taken many classes on achieving the life he wanted. He also has a show, Mission is to Train Your Mind to Adapt to Any Circumstance. The goal of the show is to help you learn, grow, transform into the person you want to become. In each episode, he talks about a specific topic, Sure, I could talk. Designed to help you train your mind to adapt to any circumstance. And um, he also talks about guest appearances, topic related book recommendations, weekly challenges, and monthly giveaways. So he's got a lot going on on his podcast as well. Welcome, Tyson. Well, thank you for having me, Julia. It's been an honor. This last week, I was tempted to quit and find a new job. I was. <laughs> Aren't we all like every day? No, you guys, I, I know there are a lot of entrepreneurs that listen to this show. You know, you also write books and you have podcasts and stuff. So you know what we're talking about when, when you just have those tragic days where it's like, I'm done. I just want a paycheck. So what happened? Do you, would you want to share what happened last week? Um, just frustrated with, with, uh, with things. Just, you know, you get to that, you, 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 your mind goes places sometimes and, um, it seems like, you know, God, what am I doing? And it was just, I was just frustrated with a couple of things going on personally, um, family and whatnot. And I was like, it should be easier if I just got a job and everybody just left me alone and, and it would just be so much simpler. And you know, sometimes um, when, especially nowadays, uh, a lot of people work from home. So I think more people can relate to it now. I've always worked from home for many years. So I sort of used to it, but now I think people can really relate in the fact of um, when your family sees you, they think you're off and you're, you're home and you can just hang out and do whatever. Ever. And it's frustrating sometimes. Like, listen, I, it's between nine to five. I, I've got work. If I was in an office, you couldn't bother me. So that kind of stuff sometimes it, it gets in your head and it's like, I want to go away. <laughs> I understand. And you know, I think part of the problem too is that more and more people are staying home. They have their own businesses. And there's always like, I always talk about, you don't know how much is involved online. Um, you know, when you, when you quit your job or you start that new online, the first day you're like in your suit, you're excited, you're ready to go. You think you're going to work nine to five. And then by about month four, like you are unshaved, you're unshowered, you're harried and hopeless. The dog is looking at you going, dude, shower, please. So, you know, there's a lot, and especially with COVID, there's a lot to adapt because people are doing this for the first time and realizing it's hard. Yes, yes. It is easy to um, start the laundry, go make dinner, um, find something on Netflix, uh, take an extended, you know, morning break. Yeah, it's very easy to just get distracted. Well, not only that, I find that when I'm procrastinating, uh, you could literally eat off my floor. <laughs> so how, what kind of strategies do you have to help some of these people with, with those kinds of distractions that are going on at home? Um, I find the, the, I guess the, the biggest thing is knowing what your priorities are. What are the one, two, three max things you're going to accomplish? Today? What if you did this one thing today? That would just make your whole day. Like everything was worth it. Waking up, um, turning on the computer, everything was worth it. Like just knocking that thing out. If you can 
identify that. And that's really the hard part. We, all, we get bogged down and stuff. And stuff. something's something hard. You're like, well, if I did this other thing, let me get, well, let me just check my emails. And you really don't get to that thing. And then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, gee, another day has gone by. It's already Thursday. You know, so identifying that one thing, really, if you can really just narrow down to one big thing and, and, and just focusing in on that, it really, I think it really just helps things flow and you get into the zone. And when you knock it out, you feel good about yourself. You feel good about everything going on. And you get that momentum and it really, it builds and it goes and it, and it flows. And that's really the thing. And I noticed personally too, when I'm done with that thing, or I'm kind of, you know, which one do I want to do next is when I do that procrastination, I start looking for things. I'm like, oh, there's a couple of chores around the house or something, or let me just do this little thing. So that's what I found. Yeah, exactly. Brian Tracy has this great book called Eat That Frog. And okay. I've tried to, it, it's always put that thing that you're avoiding on your list and knock it out first, and then you're home free. And, right. and I love that because then it doesn't give me a chance to procrastinate. And you're right. So it sounds like you have the cleanest house, the cleanest yard, like you know, too, just like I do. That yes. I, I'm procrastinating. Yes. Help me. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, I've got a bunch of stuff done I shouldn't have done today. But yeah, uh -oh. you know, another good book on that topic is, uh, I think it's called one, The One Thing or One Thing by Gary Keller, um, yeah. Keller Williams Realty. Uh, it's not about real estate, but he really, um, that was what turned around his business and his life was focusing on that one thing and not being distracted, not trying to tackle too many things at once. That's a really another great book on that subject. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting. I, I sold real estate many, many years ago. And those people who work with coaches, that block of time, that first thing in the morning is your prospecting time. Because that's the one thing that real, it's so funny that he wrote a real estate book, yeah. right? writes lots of real estate books. That one thing, that prospecting is what real estate agents hate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, right. And, yeah. And who wouldn't? Because that's another entrepreneurial thing you have to learn how to deal with is no. Yes. And not letting no ruin your day. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's a skill. And, and you know, this just as much as anybody, and a lot of people out there, it's a, it's a, it's a skill. Uh, and we got to get comfortable with it. It's okay. Um, we don't have to be so fragile. It's not, it's not personal and we got to take it, can't take it personally. Yeah. No, not only that, we have to, we have to like let go of the outcome, I think too, because when you're able to say, okay, that wasn't meant to be, you're, you're so opening space for other. I mean, I've literally had a client say no. And I'm like, oh, man, I really needed that money, but I guess it wasn't meant to be. And an hour later, I have a brand new client that comes in that I didn't expect. So you have to really, but a lot of people, so do you have strategies when you help your people um, when, when no is not a good thing and they really let it ruin their whole day? How do you overcome that? Uh, I like to start with uh, what, what is in your control? Um, you don't have control over anybody's thoughts, feelings, uh, what's going on in their life, what's going on in their business. So just worry about what you can control. Worry about the, the product you're offering, the service you're offering, or the best experience you can offer. What can you control? What is in your, your absolute control? Uh, and just focusing on that, focusing on those things and, and you know, get back to, to that. And it really, I think it helps people understand. Um, and we, we spend a lot of time, uh, I wish I could really forget who, who I got this concept from, uh, remember who I got the conference from, but there's so many people in this world. We spend a lot of time chasing out people that don't want anything to do with us. Uh, I think we need to we need to learn to let go, and you know, uh, knowing where that threshold is, maybe building up a a system or something for you and your business that that you know, uh, I, I've gotten a lot out of this person. I tried. I really wanted to help, and it's got to be a genuine thing. If you're just worried about, if you're just trying to get money out of people, it really doesn't work out too well. You got to really let go of that and understand there's a lot of people in this world. Um, there's you know, potentially there's a hundred, a thousand, 10,000, and maybe a million people that could use your service or product or whatever it is. And, and go, go find those people. Never mind the guys that don't want it or don't have anything to do with you. Um, a quick example, if you don't mind, uh, I was, I was um, talking with a, she was a therapist. Uh, it was a substance abuse or something along those lines. And, and, and she was like, how do I just help thousands and millions of people? And I was like, how many people do you really need to help in your lifetime? A hundred? Like, so if a hundred people a year, let's just say, give you 200 bucks. That's a really good life. Like, can you just focus on getting a hundred people this year to, to help and get into therapy instead of worrying about a million people? That's a, that's a different objective. That's a different budget. That's a different lifestyle, a different thought pattern. If you don't know how to get one person, getting a million is really hard. And, and it really helped her kind of like, you know what? I could really have a good life if I just helped a hundred people. And that's really obtainable. And, and you know, um, Gary, uh, was it um, Kevin Kelly? Uh, 
if he's a founder of Wired Magazine. He's got a great article. It's called a 1000 True Fans. Uh, go to kk.org and, and look at it up or just search 1000 True Fans. It really, um, you're able to really kind of hone in on that concept. That, that is so true too. When you let go of the money piece, things really start flowing. And that's not to say, I mean, we get that you need money. It's not right. like you should be, you know, a nonprofit, but um, there are a lot. So, so how can I frame it? So be that person who charges and cares versus those ones out there. Remember a couple years ago when everybody would go to a webinar, they'd click on something that was $2,000 easy buy, but those people didn't deliver. Right. Anything. So, you know, that's how you really increase business is, is that giving piece. Yeah. Delivering more than you, than the person has paid for. It really sets you up for a future. You really just can't expect and you can't pay for it. Marketing is not, and all this thing is not going to help. You're always over delivering uh, in, in that manner. And people are going to know, like, you know, when I pay Tyson 10 grand, I'm getting 12, 15, 18, 20, 30 grand worth of work. And, and that is going to translate to a lot. And people are going to understand the value um, that you provide at whatever services you're providing. That is absolutely, absolutely true. And you have to always remember too, when somebody signs up for your program and they fail, they never say, oh gosh, you know what? I didn't show up for Tyson's program. And yes, yes. yeah, it's always, he sucks. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you always and, have to remember that. Yeah, I would like to even take it a step further. Are we analyzing those losses and saying, uh, is there a system that I didn't put in place to help these people? Is there a way that I should have been reaching out or some type of follow up? Like how did I not serve these people? Um, maybe you're just, maybe that person was a, a type of person that's, you know, just like these course hoppers and types of things. And then, you know, the, uh, what was it back in the day? We used to always go to these, uh, what are those, um, those, those conference things or whatever all the time. So always have them all the time, free, those free things and all the time. And I'm, I remember going to those, trying to figure out what was going on in my life. And I see the same people at the, the real estate conference. That was at the vending machine conference. That was at this conference. And it's just, just kind of hopping around looking for something to do. And yeah. Yeah. Well, there is, but you have to remember when you go to those conferences, one of those things we know from our quiz taking uh, practices is that 80% of that room has no motivation. They will never pull a trigger. So it's important that you know that you're when you're seeing those people over and over, you have to ask yourself, are those the action takers and really talk to them and find out, are, are they just go? Yeah. Yeah. How, oh, I went. How are, you, how are you guys addressing that 80%? What is that like? The, the 80%, we don't, we don't sell anything to. They go into our list. You know, we, we hope. We give them good content. We hope one day they'll step up. But re we really focus our time on those action takers because those are the people who are saying, yes, you know, I, I want to improve. I want to take action. And I used to see this all the time at real estate conferences when I did sell many, many years ago is – the same people would go all the time, but they wouldn't do anything. They'd be really hyped at the time. You've seen this yeah, when oh, they're yeah. in the room. They're like, yeah. And then yeah. they get home and they're like, yeah, it just seems like yeah, Wednesday. Out. The motivation's gone. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, um, you know, that's, that's what you, you have to be really invested when you're saying about the everybody, you have to be really invested in those people who are the action takers. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what, like I was saying earlier, you know, we spend, um, a lot of time on the 80%, how can I get this 80% versus, you know, what this 20% and, and they get neglected because they do their things and they do their stuff. And, but what, how much better can we serve them or how much more, um, not in a selfish way, but can we sell them or serve, you know, in, in a way or, or whatever, how can we find more of those people? And that's where a lot of the sales people don't spend time on. Yeah, no, you're so right. Because those people, if you serve that, if you're spending your time on that other 80% trying to convince and any time in sales, you're convincing you've lost. Yeah. But if you're spending that really quality time with that 20%, um, those are the people who are going to, they're going to pass. They're going to do really well. And they're going to give you referrals. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do is we offer all of our clients, like you've been through our program, you're our best people to go out and shout about it. And so we offer them to be referral partners. Yeah, they're, so, they're going to be a champion for your brand. And, and, and there's no amount of money that's going to be able to replace that. So how do you, because I think this is always a coach's dilemma. How do you handle those people who purchase and then don't step up? You know, I don't have an answer. I don't know. Um, I, I try to talk with you and I try to help and I try to do some stuff. Uh, and then the, you know, it, it, to me, it's person to person, uh, but you got to come to a point where you're like, you're just not in it and, yeah. and I'm sorry. 
and and you got to cut ties and you just got to you got to go on with your life because it's gonna you can I especially when sometimes even like a friend or somebody you're close with or somebody that you know that no you know a friend of a friend you really spend a little too much time with that person and you really suck down and, and, and you go and you neglect everybody else. And uh, it's, it's knowing when to cut ties and it's not just um, business. It's, it's also in life too. Sometimes you got to cut ties with your friends and family that are dragging you down. It's kind of the same premise. It's, it's tough. It, it, you know, especially if you're a giver or you want to really everybody succeed. Um, it's really tough, um, but you got to set up some type of principles or boundaries or rules, or whatever, and say, when I get to this type of threshold or this feeling uh, and just kind of cut it off. So let me ask you, uh, this is probably going to be kind of a weird question, but you bring up boundaries because you work with a, a lot of p- people on a personal basis as well. Um, do you find that people who get better with setting boundaries in their personal life set better business boundaries? Do you think that's... I, I would have to say so. I, I really I really would have to think so. Um, you know, when you, when, you, when you respect these boundaries, you respect these cutoff times and you respect these things... Um, I think you're really setting a precedence for, I respect myself, I respect my time, and I respect um, all this stuff, and I respect you. And, um, you know, we've, we've got other things to do, and I want to be fresh tomorrow for the next people, and I want to be able to show up. And, and if it's 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm helping you because I have no respect for my sleep, uh, I'm not going to be able to show up tomorrow for my family, for myself, and for my other clients. That is so, so very true. So what kind of experience have you had with that? If there's something you can share, because I, I, I do think that's super important because we boundaries? try, yeah, like the boundaries, because if you're not adhering to those boundaries, it takes it out of you, but it takes it out of your other clients too. So you've got to get really good with that. Um, I, I'm, I'm strict with um, my cutoff times for the day. Um, I, I will block my calendar out in advance. So uh, as of the time we're recording here, it's uh, September 24th. Tomorrow for my children is the last day of school and then fall break. So I've already blocked that off in my calendar months ago. I blocked off Christmas break and I blocked off spring break and all that's already blocked off in my calendar. So I cannot schedule anything like that. So, and I respect that and I, and I let people know. And then in the summertime, uh, I don't work on Fridays and I let everybody know in advance, mm-hmm. this is my family time. This is the day I'm gonna go. And if you don't like it, I'm sorry. I I don't mean to be rude or whatever. I don't care. Uh, it's, 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 it's summer for my kids, like six weeks. It's like six Fridays. Nobody's hopefully going to die and I'm not going to be able to help you or whatever. <laughs> uh, and just, but it's, it, you've got to, and it's tough. If you already set a precedence, it's hard to go back on it, but yeah. you've got to, you've got to do it. And it's just, you know, my phone, I, I set my phone up it automatically shuts off at 7 PM. Um, you can't get a hold of me unless you're my immediate family um, and it's things like that. I don't have notifications on my phone. I don't have notifications on my computer. I schedule as much as I possibly can. I don't always stick to it, but at least it's in my calendar and scheduled. And it starts with me. If I have my boundaries set up, if I have my things set up and letting people know, I had the other, the other day, I had to let a client know. I was like, um, you know, I'm sorry. Um, this end of the day, I will get back with you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I had to let, and it's a good client of mine. We've been, you know, many years now. And as I let her know, like, I'm sorry the end of the day i have to go do things and it's tough and but if you if you're the type of person that has already set this precedent you're the guy that answers their email within a minute you're the person that always gets back to text messages you've got to reclaim that and start letting people know that hey uh i know i've i've always been a guy that would email you back at three o'clock in the morning i'm not going to be that person anymore i'm sorry Mm -hmm. uh seven o'clock from now on i'm going to do this these are my business hours whatever you got to do to set that up and start to adhere to it and stick to it and you can change the people's behavior it doesn't take much to change the behavior set up automatic email reminders uh tim ferris has got some really good stuff on this and and uh, setting that up and that's where i learned a lot of things from and i took it into practice but it really starts with you and then start pushing it out to to your other people and you're going to lose clients you're going to lose people because that, you know, maybe they don't respect themselves or maybe they don't respect their time or they don't value it. And that's okay. We can just move on and you're, you're going to live a happier, better life. No, I definitely agree. And this time of year, I, I do take Fridays off. That's one of my things is I go golfing with my girlfriends. And you know? so, you know, we've got all winter. If you want to book, book during the winter because it's snowing here and I don't play golf. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but I love that, that you set it aside and, you know, it is what it is and and you know you have to live with it. And I think if you set those expectations up front with your clients, then then they actually know. So like I, all of my clients have my 
phone number, but I tell them, if you text me, give me 24 hours because, you know, I may be doing something. So that's one of those things that like weekends, you have to make weekends sacred too. You need your rest and, and to get back, you know, re rejuvenate, re re-energize. So I can talk. We entered the web. It did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, really. Uh, we, I think as a American society, I think we, um, we take this for granted. We take this recharge for granted. We can just charge on and I can sleep four hours. And I can do all this stuff. Um, we, you know, the science is clear. We can't um, charge for it. We're not uh, as sharp. We're not as um, able to solve problems. We never have a fluid conversation. Our thoughts are, are, are staggered. If, if we're not sleeping, we're not relaxing, we're not recharging, we're not able to be bored. We, you know, we have this problem with not putting down our phones and we're constantly have to have stimulation and you don't allow your brain to relax and to, to solve problems and to kind of unwind and, and it really, sets you up to be in a bad place forever. You're constantly stressed, you're constantly here, and it's just a constant state your body just doesn't want to be in and shouldn't be in. Mm -hmm. And I'm grumpy, I hate to say it. If I don't get my seven hours, I'm grumpy. <laughs> right, right, right. And it's good that you can recognize that instead of saying, oh, I'm just the kind of person and that's just how I am, versus saying, why am I this way? Why am I doing this? How can I be this other person? And when you realize, well, if I don't get eight hours of sleep, if I don't get a workout in or whatever it is that, you know, makes you kind of run and tick and get your body moving, then you just kind of say, just, we come up with excuses and we set ourselves up for failure, really. That is it is so, so very true. So what else can you give us tip-wise about like something we could do today to really improve what's going on in our business? Uh, turn off your phone. <laughs> well, that was easy. No, really. Um, think, think about uh, maybe, maybe not necessarily you, but the listener. Um, if your phone dings, beeps, flat, whatever, are you going to stop everything you're doing to check it? I guarantee most people are. So now what's happening here? So I'm in the middle of whatever, sending out an email, setting up a course, uh, getting ready to, to, to prepare for something, putting together my TPS report. And guess what happens? Something dings. What is it? Who knows? But I'm excited now. Somebody likes me. Somebody loves me. <laughs> Ooh, what's going on? Oh, somebody liked my Instagram post. Okay, great. Not I just done. I just killed everything happening in my brain. I've killed all my momentum. I've killed everything happening that's going on. Research shows 20, 25 minutes to get back to where you used to be mm. from that one little interruption. So now imagine if all day long, say once an hour, your phone is dinging at you. And so there you got five, let's call it five minutes there, plus 25 minutes to get back to where I used to be. That's 30 minutes. And so now I'm, now I'm back where I used to be 30 minutes ago. Now I've got, hopefully got 30 minutes before somebody bothers me again to be absolutely focused. And then to be, that over half of your day is gone. You know, uh -huh. uh, it sounds trivial and, and, and it sounds maybe funny, whatever. And we, we really have this, uh, I think unhealthy addiction to our phones. Oh yeah. And, and people, people are, I don't know how many people are like, you type your notifications. Are you crazy? Put your phone down. Are you on? You're out of your mind. Why would I do that? that that's addiction. You know, if, if I had if I had a beer in my hand, and I refused to put it down. You would take me to rehab. Yes. You know, if I had a bag of cocaine and I I could not live without it, you would take me to rehab. But because my phone, we don't have that same viewpoint on it. Um, you you, you know, people just really get. I I've seen people um, furious for taking their phone away. It's really oh, mind boggling. Yeah. Yeah. Or even getting your kids to turn it off at dinner. I mean, it's just I don't, the, my kids are not to have phones. The arguing. How old are your kids? 17 tomorrow. <gasps> and my son will be 10 uh, next month. Oh my gosh. No, my kids had phones, but yeah. I, don't it's, play. I mean, it's, it's tough, especially girls. Um, I'm not sure if you're aware of the research about that. Suicide rates are off, yeah. off the chart with, with girls like because of social media. Mm -hmm. um, this, this, you know, dysmorphia and all these types of things. Now, uh, people are having plastic surgery to look like filters. Uh, um, <sighs> it's, 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 it's really bad. And, you know, um, there's, there's some research and talk about, uh, especially with girls, uh, girls are naturally susceptible to these types of uh, social things. Um, there, there's talks about, uh, it's cool to, to be transgender and all these things. So, well, my friends are transgender, I must be too. So if I do this, then uh, people like me and I get praise. And um, there's a lot of children out there that are really destroying their lives with these things and it's sad. And, and for those types of reasons, I just don't want my kids on it. I mean, it's, it's hard enough for us as adults to function with a phone. 
and these children that don't have fully formed brains um, are just susceptible to a lot of things, a lot of deception and, and stuff. It's tough. And I, I just really, I'd rather opt out. Wow. So have you, do you have Netflix? I do. Have you watched The Social Dilemma? I haven't watched it yet, no. Yeah, watch it. They talk yeah. about a lot of the things that you just did, and it, it's a very interesting documentary. Everybody needs to watch it that's on social media. I actually got kicked off of Facebook about two months ago. <laughs> and But it was a good, ex you know, I had like 4,800 friends. I was on it all the time, and I was upset for about a day. And then I got back on, I'm, I'm using my full name instead of the other, and I have very few friends, and I hop on very little anymore. I've just kind of, you know, in between, like, like this thing like the social dilemma came up. There was another thing about how they're using social media with information warfare to divide us. So I feel like I'm just kind of, I'm off. But yeah, those yeah. first couple of days, it felt like an addiction. It really, yeah. like it totally did. I was like, because I, I was angry that I got kicked off. And I was like, what is this all about? It's, it's yeah. not that big a deal. <laughs> so. yeah. No, really, uh, maybe coming up maybe two, three years ago, uh, over was that week between Christmas and New Year's, I, I did a one week experiment. I was, I was like, I got to delete all the stuff on my phone. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the, everything I could delete gone if I had to disable it, however it worked. And the first few days, it's, it's this addiction. It's you're just tough. grabbing it and going. You're standing in line somewhere and it's just going. Um, you're at a traffic light and you're looking. And, and after the first few days, I just, I went, I, I didn't, I wasn't, I'm not a big social media person. So it wasn't, but it's just a habitual thing of looking and seeing. And, I, but after I deleted that stuff and I was, you know, after the week was over, I was like, what, what do I put back? Put back nothing. Good um, for you. Yeah. And, and, and it's been freeing. It's been so great. And sometimes I'll go on the, you know, I'll, I'll schedule time to go on the, the web version. It's like, oh, look at all these messages I have. What's going on here? You know, it's, <laughs> it's fun. It's interesting. But the amount of time you free up and the, the different things you free up is really, it's really amazing. It, it is astounding. And I know right before the election in 2016, I jumped off Twitter. I got on in 2008 because it was where authors were, but it had gotten so toxic. And, and that's kind of what I feel about Facebook now, too. I don't really do anything but LinkedIn for the most part now. And that's because it's business related. So, yeah, that's going to change soon, too, I think. Oh, I hope not. It's the one place you don't see political stuff. <laughs> it's going to change. I think it's, I think it's already changing a bit now. Um, oh. I hate, I don't know if you've seen lately, but every time you go on Facebook or Instagram, um, I think even Google, I've noticed recently, it's all about like making sure I, I'm going to vote. Oh yeah. I yeah. really don't think it's your business. Really. Yeah. It, it's not, it, it's not only that it's like, you know, they only want you to vote one way. That's so yeah, and that's come the thing on, too. let's be serious. Yeah. Um, serious people are already and have been and vote in every election. So, mm -hmm. so Tyson, where do we find you if we want to find out more about you? Uh, go on the LinkedIn uh, slash, dot com slash Tyson Gaylord. You can connect with me there. Um, you can search for me. You can search for the Social Chameleon Show. Uh, find out everything I'm I'm really up to. I'm not sure if you have show notes or not. Well, you guys can we can easily link to yep. all that stuff. Yep. So great. Well, thank you so much for being a guest. Uh -huh. I hope you guys will love this conversation because I think we just revealed why you shouldn't be on social media anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Yeah, so Thanks. keep on social media, just schedule the time and, and use it responsibly. Yes, exactly. Thanks, Tyson. You're welcome.